Meaningful Careers series. My name is Jean Parker, and I am part of the Meaningful Careers team with EBBF. So before we begin, some people might be asking, what is this EBBF? EBBF stands for Ethical Business Building the Future, and it's a global learning community providing opportunities to contribute to the transformation of business and the economy. That's the short version. EBBF.org will get you the more complete version. Check it out if you've never been there. The theme for this morning is Meaningful Service in Meaningful Careers. We have two resource people here who are guests. First is Arya Bedeyan. She worked in mega corporate advertising and marketing in the mega corporate sector where she says, quote, they put on the golden handcuffs. I find that really intriguing. Naira Pujara is the founder and CEO of Y Center, an online learning company. And he says, careers built on service to others are the most gratifying ones. Don't take my word for it. Try it yourself and you will see the magic. Um, for me, it very much has been a journey of the inner voice. And this is the big question is, how do you know whether you're being guided or whether you're just, um, you know, it's just your own imaginings. And I have found consultation is a wonderful tool, you know, to, to consult with others. Um, in addition, often I find um, inner voice goes along with external confirmation in some way that there will be a, 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 a confirmation if you shift gears, especially if it's a very big shift there will be a confirmation along that new path that will encourage you and give you a sense that you have um, made a choice that advances you. I'm very curious, Ira, what could that confirmation look like? Um, I think it could, you know, usually, I think of it almost as a, a, an internal language. It will be customized to you and you will recognize it. So I think it's very dependent on the individual and, um, you know, and, and what was that, what was that inner voice saying? What was, what was that thought or idea you put out into the universe? And as you pivot, there will be an answer that comes back that gives you courage to continue walking down that new path. That's been my, my sense or my experience. Mm. Did you have an inner voice, diarrhea? I Can you through this process this shift that towards a yeah. more service-oriented organization? Um, I shared a very quick story with the group regarding this. Um, and that's why I asked the question to Arya. So I have a corporate experience of eight hours, I have one day corporate experience, eight hours, not years, eight, nine to five. And 5.30, I decided I'm going to transition to anything but this. Um, but I did know one thing, for a matter of fact that I do want to do something around service. And I actually found an opportunity with my university around service learning in Mozambique, Africa. Now, without getting into details of what happened there, how much, how many times was I in self-doubt about that decision? How did I ever get around convincing my parents that I am not a fool, uh, which I was maybe, <laughs> but I still had to convince them, you know, at least act or pretend like I'm not one. Um, and uh, I remember there was a phase after quitting that job and until getting that confirmation, like Arya mentioned, knowing that, okay, I may not after all be the fool I could have been. That period, I think that transition period, uh, the self-doubt period was the most interesting one where most of the learning happened for me personally. It could be different for everyone. And one in particular incident stands out more than the other ones is my first action, my first significant action after making that transition of quitting my job was to go to, I think Mehmood just pointed it right away, was to seek consultation. And I went to someone I felt could be that person. And I went to one of my professors uh, who is my mentor, advisor, friend, philosopher, all of those things. And I asked, and I told him first, hey, you always told in your class, one should follow their dreams and aspirations. And here I am just quitting my job on first day 
he was not visibly very excited about it he in fact was almost scared he's like don't put this on me i never told you to quit your job that's your interpretation of following dreams and aspirations and this is 2012 where the american markets were not that great with respect to jobs so i was not considered very wise but here is what happened and the story is that's why it's special to me he said i don't know what to tell you but get the hell out of my office pardon my words that's exactly what he said uh, maybe much worse and he said when you are on the way out you will see the thinnest book on the shelf pick that up go and read that and then come back it took me 12 days to read that book i'll tell you what it is in the end so you hear the whole story i'll not give it away and i come back after 12 days and i give him the book back and i say thank you so much i think i know what i want to do with my life and i feel good he didn't ask me what it is he didn't ask me any of the questions he just said on what page did you find your answer and i said you know when in that book when the protagonist is crossing the river on the boat and he's that's when i knew what i want to do with my life and i i think i'm doing the right thing and he he said uh, that's what he asked and i i told him um, but i don't know if it's right or not um, and i asked him at what page did you find your answer he's 56 year old he was back then and he replied back saying who said i did and he replied back and he said later this is an important thing for you to note you found an answer somewhere in the pages of this book and that answer will again lose its meaning in a few days and weeks the self doubt will come back you will have challenges keep the book keep rereading you will find a different answer on a different page and please remember this is not about finding an answer your life you cannot make purpose of your life about finding it it's about jumping from question to question uh yes and is the book is siddhartha by herman hess and i'm having goosebumps i really mean like my face every uh, i'm i'm kind of frozen right now because i'm just i was transported back to that day when he told me that and i was scared because the guy i looked up to he said there are no right answers and that was very scary but he was he couldn't have been more right for me this journey of transition from a typical job to service based career i'm still jumping from question to question that's what keeps me afloat uh, and it's by no means without self doubt or without questioning myself but i think i have been taught by someone who i really respect that it is about this jumping from question to question so that's my one take away from my personal story that you may find an Thank answer you. but it may be different thank you saria you have said that your work is your service and your service is your work so i guess you have gone through a journey right in order to to get to this conclusion and you have also shared with us that uh, not always your work is aligned with your service and that you have learned how to step away from that right so i, I guess it, as i said it has been a long journey with some challenge, challenges probably ethical challenges Uh, from your previous corporate job so would you like to share something with us about those challenges and what's really has triggered the change and gave you the strength actually to 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 leave behind this um this job you had yes um well it's quite a journey i mean i'm i'm of an older generation than than daria my career started in um you know my my graduation from undergrad in the um in the mid 90s and um at that time i felt like the what i was striving for was excellence so and you know what is it that i'm good at and how do i um achieve excellence with whatever i do and anything that i do is is you know is service and um and i uh i shifted from advertising went to business school and then went into marketing and um worked for a, a big company and i chose the company because of its ethical profile they were known to be really supportive for women and mothers um you know so many things that you know i felt like it was the top of the pack of where i could go with an with an mba and uh, i loved my job i was good at my job um you know it took me all over the world it was sort of my dream come true at the same time there was a nagging inner voice and that nagging usually would get louder when i would be in conversations about coherence and the world that we're trying to build and what it's going to look like and something in me you know i worked in packaged food um i was having my own health issues that were somewhat adjacent to um the issue of processed foods at the time i didn't know it but food was a big 
personal issue in my life. Um, and, um, and, you know, something about, oh, all this packaging and shipping and something isn't quite sustainable in what I'm doing. Um, also, I was a marketer. So generating demand um, was something that was like a superpower of mine. You could give me anything and I could sell it and generate demand for it. And something about that didn't feel quite right. But um, like, like Jesus, there were golden handcuffs. You know, um, they're, you know, like your, your financial, your remuneration is always four years away with, um, you know, zero vesting until you hit that four-year mark. And so your retirement, your future is all just ahead of you, just ahead of you, just ahead of you. And um, I think for me, I, it was um, this, the, the inner voice just got very, very, very loud, but I still couldn't quite discern it. And I decided I needed some time away. And so I took a sabbatical. And once I was in that sabbatical, um, I really focused on, on my kids and immersing myself in motherhood. Um, three months in, four months in, I could see much more clearly than when I was in the midst of, um, of, of, of my career. And I felt like for me, working in a big corporation, particularly a publicly traded corporation, um, where my ethical obligation to the company especially as you know, I was becoming uh, into senior management was to make the company, the shareholders, the most money within the bounds of the law. And that is my ethical job. I like I'm signed up to do that. If I do anything other than that, I'm not fulfilling my job. And um, I just felt like I, you know, when the decision is in my hands, how can I do that if I don't agree with the decision because of, there's so many externalities in, uh, in these large companies. And that to me was not the right decision-making framework. And so um, it was sort of a crisis because I felt like I'd learned how to do the devil's work, you know, like the, the engine of, of all of um, what is destroying the world is this um, demand generation. And here I am an expert in it. And so I took some time aside from that and sort of pulled away, but then I really started, you know, um, when I felt like I can't compromise on this anymore and I just really stuck to my principles, I'm not going to do this kind of work. I tried a couple of times to, to, to do it in a different way, to, um, you know, to have the work I did benefit something, but in the end, I decided that for me, I could not, um, participate in marketing um, anything that generates demand that I didn't uh, believe in or didn't see as part of the, the future. And, and, and what happened is those confirmations, you know, opportunities to start new businesses, um, consulting work that was really aligned. And, um, and it was a hard, there was a hard period, like Daria mentioned, of self-doubt and uncertainty. But I found that sticking to those principles put me onto a different groove where the rules of nature are different. And it's all about what you are drawing to you, what's being attracted to you because you are holding the principle. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you, what a journey, right? Uh, would love to hear from Daria as well. Uh, you say that you have, uh, uh, you are much more focused on working in, uh, in a contest where we are not superhero, right? Uh, superior to anyone else, but we're all equal. So I, I would be interested to hear uh, your stories, right? Your transition from a typical uh, corporate environment into a new environment, very much focused on, uh, on service. I think one of the biggest keys as I transition to my current work um, at Y Center, was when I saw what was around me from what I had to learn, the examples of service learning, including the program that took me to Mozambique in the first place was something still I didn't identify myself with, where I have put myself in a position of superior power and a self understanding that, okay, I'm going to help all of these people, even though they never asked of me any help. I've assumed they need my help and I've assumed I'm qualified enough to give that help. And I've assumed that it's required now. All these three are assumptions and most of them and all of them were mostly wrong. Uh, so my biggest uh, learning for service has been uh, go from a place, going from a place of learning as opposed to working. 
and I'm engaged a lot in co-learning and co-working with people, uh, no matter what kind of work I'm doing. And it's very frustrating to do that. I'm not going to lie because I'm trying to work with people and we're trying to, you know, figure out co-creating a solution. Uh, but to have all of us on the same page and have our pride, it's very difficult. But hey, you know, if I wanted simple things, I would have been not quitting my dad earlier job so it's i'm not going to comment on the easy and the difficulty of it but uh this is what is important for me to not get into the position of power and i have so sometimes slipped myself from that and forgotten that and i do sometimes assume that position again i think that's maybe default the craving of power of human beings as a race or as species uh and i i always am surrounded by people who remind me of the same thing that hey what are you doing nobody asked you to do this like just step back and uh, my other professor friends, Professor Steven Pizer, he said, sometimes you need to take one step back to move forward. I found it very conflicting, but I, I'm trying to still process what that means, but I think it's beautiful. Take a step back to move forward. That's service for me. Um, I have one question for Daria. What keeps you from going back into the corporate setting? So you acted, you took an action, what keeps you acting? What keeps me from going back? Actually, as much as I was scared transitioning to service, I'm also more scared to go back. So I think the feeling of being scared is constant in both directions. Uh, and I, I actually did once think of it when, at my lowest point in life, which you know happens many a times in a year. Well, I think this is the lowest I can get to emotionally. And then a few months later, I'm in for a surprise and I find myself again at below Marina Trench. Uh, that that's how low I am. Um, if you guys don't know, that is the lowest point on earth, right? Anyway, so I'm there and I'm like, so my wife, in fact, now reminds me like, you want to go back to that? I, and my wife also works in a corporate setting and she loves her job and all of that. But she's like knowing who you are and what you do. And I'm like, oh yeah, I'm very scared to do that again. So let me push this further. So I'm scared both ways, Jean. I'm scared doing what I do right now, but in this I'm scared and I'm happy that I may be scared and I might not even be happy. So I'm choosing, <laughs> and I, again, happiness is also very surreal emotion. So I, I, I think I chose the wrong word. I'm more the feeling of contentment as opposed to happiness. Mm -hmm. You know, there is no happiness anyway. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, I just want to ask Arya to briefly address that question too, before we move in, because this seems to really um, segue nicely into our action steps breakout. Um, so I don't know if any of you have, have food sensitivities or allergies, but um, I have developed a physiological <laughs> allergic reaction to things that are not aligned. Um, my body will, will tell me, I just really can't, you know, even if I want to uh, work on something or an opportunity comes and it's not quite um, aligned with my principles, it probably comes from trying so many times to make compromises um, you know, one of the businesses I started was um, a boutique marketing agency. And I thought, okay, I'll just funnel a lot of funds to things I really care about. And, and, um, and that didn't feel right. And, you know, I kept doing things that didn't feel right. And so now it's just a matter of, I can't. And I just know so clearly that I can't, that um, it's, it, you know, and, and it rel relies having, um, wanting that purpose to be first before any of the other benefits that you get from career and job. And so I've had to adjust my life and my lifestyle um, so that it is more flexible and I don't have to have that same kind of regularity of work. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, it wasn't always that way, but it is for me now. Like I know right, right away, I'm not, I'm not interested in that. And um, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I was challenging our, our groups with the question, what can we actually do tomorrow that is not quitting the job, right? Because uh, throughout several conversation, um, I found myself um, and some of other people get into the conclusion that the only conclusion is uh, quitting the job, which is not always the case, right? Uh, so what we can actually do tomorrow in order to shape our working environment. We, we talked yeah, about right. uh, acting from within, um, making small changes that progressively have an impact that we see that it, it, it reaches out to others. 
um, and it's you know based on your inner balance. And some of us have uh, didn't feel that strongly about that inner uh, spiritual um, aspect in the workplace, but uh, it is part of our identity, and so. Uh, it reflects on the way we do things. So we, we were talking about how to uh, reach out, affect change from within rather than quitting the job. We, we took the, the chance to talk about, yeah, also if this um, vision that you're, you're, you're following uh, in the organization is, is higher enough, uh, which is able to, uh, to attract everyone to join this process of change and or answering the quest of the world, which is 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 um, is questing, and no matter what kind of job you are doing or role that you're you're playing, um, that make sure that your motivation or your your action is is sincere and consistent, and to be able to to move towards that direction, and um, you can't do any job which is in in this company and and has a meaning for that. Um, I think everybody who actually put that in mind um, that you, you're playing your role, which is contributing and moving forward towards that goal and towards that purpose. Um, and that automatically motivates everyone to move in the same directions. And, um, and I would say that brings a lot of joy every day for you because you are seeing progress of yourself um, and also progress of the organization that we are, which you are serving to. We thank you. Thank you for attending. We thanks we thank also our guests, Da and Aria, for helping us out by uh, putting a lot of this into perspective. And thanks for coming. Thank, thank you, you very much. much. Bye, everybody. Bye.